Hey there, it's Pastor T with another Daily Psalmanac, where I hope to help you grow in the practice of prayer through a deepening relationship with the prayer book of the Bible, the Psalms. And today is the first in a three-part series as we read, reflect upon, and pray back to the Lord, the long Psalm 78. So today we'll look at the first section of it, and then in the next two days, the corresponding uh, and following two sections. So we begin with Psalm 78. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to my, the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach to their children that the next generation might know them the children yet unborn, and arise and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. And that they should not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart wasn't steadfast, whose spirit wasn't faithful to God. The Ephraimites, armed with the bow, turned back on the day of battle. They didn't keep God's covenant, but refused to walk according to his law. They forgot his works and the wonders that he had shown them, in the sight of their fathers he performed wonders, in the land of Egypt, in the fields of Zoan. He divided the sea and let them pass through it, and made the water stand like a heap. In the daytime he led them with a cloud, and all the night with a fiery light. He split rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. He made streams come out of the rock and caused waters to flow like rivers. Yet they sinned still more against him, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the wilderness? He struck the rock so that water gushed out and streams overflowed. Can he also give bread or provide meat for his people? Therefore, when the Lord heard he was full of wrath, a fire was kindled against Jacob. His anger rose against Israel because they did not believe in God and did not trust his saving power. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven and he rained down on them manna to eat, and gave them the grain of heaven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 78, as I say, is one of the longest psalms in the whole book of the Psalter. And what it does is it really gives, in a nutshell, a rather long nutshell, but a nutshell nevertheless, a history of the Old Testament people of Israel, at least, of course, to the point that the psalmist was writing. And I want to start today in this first part of this three-part series looking at verses 5 through 7, where it establishes the importance of recounting this history, not just for the Israelites and for the psalmist, but for you and me as well. So it says, He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and arise and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God keep his commandments. Psalm 78, as so often in the scriptures, exhorts and enjoins the people of God to pass it on, to pass on the truths of God to the next generation. Sometimes people will talk about the prosperity gospel, the idea that, well, if you just believe in God, he's going to bless you and all will go well with you. But an author by the name of Andy Crouch has tweaked that a little bit. And he said, what the scriptures really teach is not a prosperity gospel, it's a posterity gospel. In other words, that we are called as God's people to pass the message of the gospel and the truths of his word down to our posterity, to the next generation. This is the, the rhythm of the mission of God. Now, there's really two dimensions to it. We think of the Great Commission, where Jesus sends us out to all of the nations, to those right now who are walking around. But there's another dimension to it. It's not only about a commission, but also a transmission. This is what Psalm 78 is getting at, about the transmission of God's truth to the next generation. That's why Psalms like Psalm 78 and elsewhere in the scriptures recount this history. It's a way of us to, to remember, to reflect upon, and to hand down to those after us the truth of God's word. And so Psalm 78 gives us uh, not only that encouragement, but it also puts it into practice as it recounts many of the deeds and the history of God's people with the Lord. And as we continue tomorrow, we'll delve more into what that history looks like. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks that you have entrusted to us, though we are jars of clay, the glorious treasure of your word. 
And we pray, Lord, that we would be faithful as we hand it down to our posterity, to the next generation, that they might tell a generation yet to come, that many more might know you, not only in our own time, but in ages to come until our Lord Jesus returns. Count us faithful in this task, we pray for Jesus' sake. Amen. And now, may you go forth today emboldened by the promise of the Lord who is with you always, even to the very end of the age. Go in his peace. Amen.